Hi, I'm Josh with Tactical Tech, and today I'm going to show you how to turn a mild-mannered, everyday computer into a TFTP server that serves up semantic ghost boot disks, so you can boot from a Pixie environment into a ghost cast session. First thing we're going to need to do is create a new folder on the C drive, which will be named TFTP Boot. Next thing we're going to do is create our Windows PE disk. I'm going to use a semantic ghost boot wizard. Choose Windows PE and go to edit. And to do this, we're going to need to add in the NIC drivers and storage drivers for every computer we plan to reach out and touch and clone. What I do is I choose a Windows PE, I do copy, and that will create me a new driver package to choose from. I'll name this test3. I don't want to screw up what I already have and in order to add in those drivers that aren't currently built in I go to add new driver and today I'm going to be working with CF19's so I'm just going to go to location browse and browse for that driver we need on the LAN okay give this an applicable friendly name and I'm going to choose Vista for the operating system because I believe that's what Windows PE is actually based on. Go to OK and then I'm going to make sure to check that box next to the Windows PE or the drivers that I actually need to load up. I'm going to choose Broadcom because I want to get a couple Dells in there and my E6520's And I believe that's it. Go to OK. And now I'll add in the driver package to this uh, boot disk that we're creating, you know, for lack of a better term. It will not necessarily add it to the image itself. It's just for the Windows PE environment for cloning over the disk. Now I let that ride and go uh, off screen. I had an error code with B57 driver. Uh, I'm going to just roll with it and see if it works. Uh, you may get a couple of errors every once in a while. You just got to work through that. Okay, so I'll take. Choose this option that I just created. Go to OK. And I'm going to go next. Continue on this uh, boot image. Uh, choose TCP network boot image. Go next. Uh, we're going to go with defaults all the way around. I need to play with those a little later on. And TFTP root is going to be that folder we created in the video, the beginning of this video. TFTP boot. Okay. We're going to name this boot. go next, next, and it's going to take a while to uncompress and recompress that PE image. So it's done doing all that, go to finish, and now we start setting up uh, the TFTP server. What you'll need is TFTPD, and I believe I got 4.0, which is nice because it has this log viewer in the TFTP server. Uh, we go to settings, and all we need in this environment, in my environment, is a TFTP server. Uh, if you don't have one, you may need to check DHCP server. I have a Windows-based DHCP server, so I'm just going to ride with that. Under TFTP settings, you want to ensure that Pixie compatibility, progress bar, uh, translate Unix file names, and use a slash as virtual root are checked. And go to OK. Uh, as far as the current the directory, we're going to be using the TFTP boot and make sure that the interface is set to your local area network interface or whichever one you're pointing to. The next thing we need to do is get into our DHCP server if you didn't have one, uh, if you have one at home or at your work. And we're going to create a couple scope options. Uh, scope option 66, which is boot server host name. And that's going to be the IP address of the computer that you're hosting the service off of. Now before I go any further, I want to sort of go into my own theory of uh, what all is created with this boot image. Under it, uh, we have pixie boot dat n12 
And that is basically, I believe, the load file for the Pixie environment. After that, it reaches over to Boot Manager, which is the actual menu or whatever uh, tells the uh, tells the Pixie environment what to load up for uh, the for the image that it's going to be running. Boot Wim is the actual image that it ends up running, and I know BCD is in there somewhere because I kept getting BCD errors whenever it couldn't find it. So let's see if this works because I haven't actually worked this image and had a lot of tweaking to do earlier. Uh, the other option you need to set up on DHCP server is uh, option 67 which will point to that pixieboot.n12 and get the whole process started. So let's give this a shot see if it fires up correctly. You may need to turn off any firewalls you have on your computer. Uh, as long as it's open on port 69, I think you'll be alright because that is the default TFTP server port. So we'll go to power on this machine and uh, I already got an image on it so I need to get in the boot menu. And we'll go for network boot from Intel. Or whatever. And we see that it is downloading under this log file, which is nice. Looks like it had an error somewhere. Now let's see if it fires up. Cool, and it's firing up without any problems. Now I did have two different uh, boot images under here, and I'm not sure how it did, but it did give me an, uh, a menu earlier, which was pretty cool. And just as this is going, let me give you my personal commentary. I spent probably eight hours or some, you know, up till 2 a.m. the other night trying to figure this stuff out and there's a lot of resources that tell you to use this 3com pixie server and this 3com uh, stuff that you can install under extras of the semantic installation but you know it, that just confused the hell out of me and left me cross-eyed I ended up passing out and uh, woke up angry and distraught you don't need any of that or at least I didn't need any of this stuff to get it running so just ignore all that stuff, uh, ride with this. If it doesn't work, you know, you're gonna have to figure it out on your own, bud, because I can't help you out. So that gets us into our boot environment. I just wanna make sure that this is working. So I go to multicast, just name the session A, and let me get the server running itself. And it is running, no. I'm gonna restore an image. Whatever. Okay, and looks like it reached out and touched it. So, if I wanted to restore, I'd be good to go. That concludes this tutorial on how to turn your common everyday ordinary computer into a Pixie Boot server for Semantic Ghost Boot Images. Thank you very much, good luck, and have a nice day.